Dr. Kenshin is here. Dr. Martin Kenshin was born in 1948 in Bhopal, Germany. He studied in the USA, in Paris, and did a PhD in German literature from Vienna. Uh, from 1973, he taught German at the Ramakrishna Mission Institute of Culture, Kolkata. Returning to university, he did an MA in Madras, the present is known as Chennai, and a PhD in comparative religion from Vishwabharati, uh, you know about the Vishwabharati Santiniketan, and it's based uh, in, you know, in, in 1980. And he has consulted the Sri Ramakrishna Akhamrito and the poetry of Rabindranath Tagore from Bengali to Jhana. And he has authored a Tagore biography and published on Tagore's relationship with Jhana. He writes on in very intellectual and intellectual subjects and lectures in India and Europe. And during the last 35 years, Dr. Kenjin is involved in the development work of two tribal villages around Shantinian. His most recent English book is Indo-German Exchanges in Education. Rabindranath Tagore meets Paul and Edith Gahi, the Oxford University Press. 2020, the publication date, and in 2022, his autobiography was published in Jannam. So may I request Dr. Kenchen to give his valuable talk here. So please give him a big hand. Both in India and in Europe, 
We generally accept the problem that life is a learning process or we learn as long as we live. But have we really made a serious attempt to understand what we mean by this sentence? We learn as long as we live. The novel mindset in our present time suggests that learning is meant for schoolboys, school children, and for college and university students. Once a degree has been earned or a particular examination has been passed, learning is over. And the next phase in one's life begins namely seeking a job, then taking an income, then starting a family and raising children. According to the ancient scriptures of India, a person's life follows a succession of four stages or ashramas. These four stages are studentship, the stage of a householder, the stage of a hermit, and class of a monk or sannyasi. This is the Tatur Ashrama Dharma. This ancient Indian system may not have been strictly followed at any time in history. Not every family man or married woman may choose to spend the last years of their life as wandering monks or nuns or as hermits isolated from society. Yet this value system of seeing the monastic state as the supreme and ultimate goal in life has deeply affected the Indian psyche until this day. Likewise, to give the first 25 years of one's life exclusively to studies in the custody of a guru or teacher has remained an ideal, a sacred institution. However, nothing is overtly mentioned about the continuation of studies during the stages of a household and family. It is understood that after retirement, during the hermit stage, elderly persons would devote themselves to the study and recitation of Holy Scripture. We see this happening in a variety of ways even today. Retired people read the Sri Ramakrishna Tathamrita, the Bhagavad Gita, the Puranas. Then do householders, the members of the second stage, not continue the process of studying and learning? Indeed they do continue that process. But here we are coming closer to the topic of today. Learning does not happen only through textbooks. A large part of our learning comes through our life experience. As we are growing up, we meet new and diverse experiences. Book knowledge, which we gain as pupils, is only the beginning of the learning process. Sitting in classrooms and listening to teachers gives us a certain type of knowledge, namely it helps us to make sense of our daily experiences. We learn to give names to the things which surround us. We learn to interact with the objects, with inanimate as well as animate or living things. We realize that we are not alone in this world. Our family is not only family existing. With the help of class teaching, we begin to be able to communicate with the people and the things that share space with us. The householder stage focuses on learning through the kind of life experiences which we were not able to have during our student days. Such experiences are getting a profession and adjusting to a professional life as 
uncompromisingly as possible, like relating to our colleagues, relating to the hierarchical structure prevalent in most professions. Then naturally lies the coverage and more varied by the multiple associations and contacts we receive through our professional life. We travel, we meet new situations, thereafter we long for a partner and wish to start a family. These are experiences which totally revolutionize the life we have lived so far as students. <coughs> Many young people approach the decisions which lead to such new experiences with dread and anxiety. They do not feel prepared to take these decisions with sound judgments. However, school life and university studies should give us the knowledge and the maturity to deal with such experiences. Putting it differently, school and university does not and must not consist only of exams, tasks or fails, of memorizing facts and figures, which our school books and textbooks provide. A large part of the training we get in school and university should be to prepare ourselves for taking mature decisions. How can we gain such maturity, such maturity as students? Our classroom education must give us the logical training of how we can reach step by step a certain knowledge. Let me give you an example. In our classroom, we have learned of the existence of, say, the town of Darjeeling. The teacher has told us of the snow mountains, the tea gardens, and the different languages spoken in ethnic groups in Nagiri. In the classroom, we have heard that there are trains crisscrossing India, taking us to multiple places. This is how far the teacher will tell you. When it comes to planning a trip to Nagiri, then we have to rely on both knowledge and our logical training. We look whether the link is connected by train. We realize that it is not. We find out that New Jalpaiguri is the nearest railway station. From there, how to proceed? We find out that we can go by bus or by a narrow gauge train, the toy train, to the building. Then we research with trains, which trains move from our town or city to New Delhi, Paraguay, and so on. If you ask the village boy with little or no education, he will not be able to make such a step-by-step -step research because he has not received the tools of how to gain such knowledge. The radius of his mobility remains confined to his immediate surroundings. He will not even dare to think of traveling, say to Calcutta, unaided, or by himself. The conclusion is twofold. One, school and university must not only give us the facts provided in books, but also the ability to use our knowledge as tools to gain further knowledge, both practical and theoretical. Competent teachers will teach you how to relate one piece of knowledge with other pieces of knowledge. Teachers must teach students to connect the world around you into an interconnected, coherent whole. If they do not do so, they have failed 
gündeme geçti. Bu da bir kritik sekans. The conclusion is twofold. One, school and university must not only give us the facts provided in books, but also the ability to use our knowledge as tools to gain further knowledge, both practical and theoretical. Competent teachers will teach us how to relate one piece of knowledge with other pieces of knowledge. Teachers must teach students to connect the world around you into an interconnected, coherent form. If they do not do so, they have failed in their mission. One important aspect of how to connect the world around you is to live to experience the world consciously. We ought to ask us at every step, what do we see? What do we hear? Why does this happen? How should we react to it? How do others react? What does it mean to us? An inquisitive mind is the ABC of true education. He who is constantly asking himself or herself and the teachers, why, 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 will finally reach the X, Y, Z of solid knowledge and perhaps even of wisdom. We realize that after school and university, after classrooms and textbooks, the learning process is not yet complete. This process continues with the same intensity during the second stage, the house or your stage. At that stage, the family, one's profession and work environment, and indeed the wide world are symbolically the classroom. The topic of my lecture is the benefits of a broad-based Tagorean education. You will ask how does Rabindranath Tagore come in? So far I have not mentioned his name. Rabindranath is first of all known as a poet. He wrote plays, novels, stories, essays, but he was also an educator. In 1901, Rabindranath founded an informal primary school, his Brahmacharya Ashram, in Chantinikitan, and 20 years later, he founded Vishwa Bharati, which gradually evolved into a university. Rabindranath's Vishwa Bharati wanted to be a counter institution to the threadmill schools that the British colonizers had created in India. The main feature of these colonial style schools was a disciplined memorizing of facts, which in English is called by hearting. Although this method of imbibing knowledge has nothing whatsoever to do with the heart. Rabindranath hated such kind of schooling. He was sent from one school to another and finally left school altogether. He became a dropout. And this dropout, some 30 years later, became himself the founder of a school. He called it the Poets School. By that he wanted to emphasize that his school was an informal educational institution free from the rules and rigorous government control. He wished that his children discover and develop their talents, their sense of beauty, their taste of the arts, on the whole discover and develop their taste for life and love for life. This was the agenda of Rabindranath Tagore. Rabindranath was certain that the rigorous 
schedule of learning, complete with grading and examinations would not help the students to develop these qualities. A sense of beauty, a taste for the arts, a love for life. Therefore, he wanted these constraining factors to go complete in his school. He preferred a happy chaos among the children rather than seeing them disciplined and bloated with book learning, yet dispirited and uncreative. He knew that every child is an artist, and the less uninhibited a child is, the more of an artist is he or she. Of course, book knowledge is not irrelevant. Even in the eyes of Rabindranath, book knowledge was essential. He himself, after all, wrote books, and among them are numerous books meant for his school children. But the content of books should not be memorized. Instead, they should be made alive. They should be made alive, create enthusiasm, and provoke thought, and lead to the realization of truthful living. I repeat, for the content of books should not be memorized. Instead, they should be made alive, create enthusiasm, and provoke thought and lead to the realization of truthful living. Truth should not be memorized, cannot be memorized, but they must be deeply understood and felt as truths and fixed in the mind like luminous stars in the sky. Truths cannot be memorized, should not be memorized, but they must be deeply understood and felt as truths and fixed in the mind like luminous stars in the sky. Earlier I have mentioned how knowledge should not be understood in isolation, but should, knowledge should be seen as related to and connected with other elements of knowledge or other strands of experience. Gradually, a student, as he or she matures, must see a given fact or an experience as the part of a whole. This mental process is called contextualizing, to see one particular element within its larger context. I repeat, gradually, a student, as he or she matures, must see a given fact or an experience as a part of a whole. This mental process is called contextualizing, namely to see one particular element within its larger context. Conventional education will never be able to achieve this. It needs Rabindranath's broad-based educational ideals, which will be able to relate and connect the various elements of knowledge, of experience and imagination to bring them together into a living whole. Rabindranath's ideal of education brings in all of the elements which make life joyful and was given. That is songs, instrumental music, dance, theatre performances, art, literature, and appreciation of nature. Rabindranath emphasized to his students that a part of appreciation of nature is especially the appreciation of the farmer's life who puts in hard labor to till his fields and get a harvest which can feed him and his dependents. Rabindranath admired the farmer's deep connect with the earth 
and the crowns which grow on the earth. For Rabindranath, his relationship between man and earth was not merely emotional, rather it became spiritual in nature. This relationship between man and the earth was not merely emotional for Rabindranath, rather it became spiritual in nature. He saw it in the context of humankind cooperating with divine creation in order to assure the survival of both humankind and God's creation. What more relevant education can be can be getting in our age of climate change and the existential threat to our environment. I believe, let me put this in other words as well, that Rabindranath's education must be, is the education of the future which has a key to help the world by education to tackle the threats of climate change, climate change, and threat to the environment. This would be another subject which uh, to elucidate this. Song, music, dance, play acting widen our mental and spiritual horizon beyond the things and activities which are merely practical and necessary for managing our everyday life. If your only goal in life is just push a job, get a salary, and for the rest cross it in tea shops and play cards, then please do not take the trouble of reading Rabindranath and seek his guidance for achieving a fulfilled life. If your idea of a fulfilled life is to just rake in as much money as possible to build a house and drive a car and advance your social standing by marrying into higher society, then too there is no need for a winner. However, if the meaning of a fulfilled life to you is more than the enjoyment of food and drink and of a healthy body, of a healthy body, if a fulfilled life to you means to discover and unfold your many talents and faculties, then do take the guidance of Rabindranath Tagore. You will count yourself extremely lucky to have been born into the same culture and the same language as the poet, who many have called a complete man. I mean to say to all of you who have been noticed by verse whose mother tongue is Bengali, should count yourself extremely lucky to have Rabindranath as the poet of your mother tongue and the guiding star of your life. Song, dance and theatre bring out in us the earliest phase of your life, of our life, of your life, the original child. Song, dance and theatre bring out in us the earliest phase of our life, namely the original child. Early childhood was the moment when we were the happiest. The pleasure of singing and dancing connects us with the wide world of sound, with the rhythms that we sense and hear all around us, it gives us a feeling of being part of a whole. Such a feeling does not fetch us a self true, but it allows us to view the world, our society, and us within our society with a mature attitude. It gives us the ability to overcome many of our sorrows, to renounce many of our silly ambitions and it makes us an example 
to us. I repeat the last sentence. Just a minute. It gives us the feeling of being a part of a whole. Such a feeling does not fetch us a salary. True. But it allows us to view the world, our society, and us within our society with a mature attitude. It gives us the ability to overcome many of our sorrows, to renounce many of our silly ambitions, and it makes us an example to others. Thank you. You may ask, where is such a school which tries to imbibe and give examples of the Tagorean education? Well, as I have mentioned, or as this gentleman has mentioned in the beginning, I am connected with a trial school for the last 35 years, not far from Hamdi. And there we have tried to emulate, to imitate the example, the model of Rabindranath's education as much as it was possible. And the first thing is that we try to teach these Shantar children in their mother tongue, not in Bengali, not in English but in Shantali. And the number two is that we have chosen to start the school 35 years ago in a natural surrounding, which is natural until today, which has not built up all around, and remains with trees, orchards, flowers, bushes, and so on, because the natural surrounding is part of your education. If you have followed my little speech carefully, you will understand that nature plays an important part in education as far as Rabindranath's example is concerned. We can learn from nature, we must learn from nature, and we must contribute to nature. How do I continue here? Uh, okay. Now, here you have first seen that we are trying to add to the core subjects of any school, mathematics, language, and so on, uh, various other subjects which are out of the way, which schools normally don't teach. One we have seen is yoga which has become more popular in education, but even 10 years ago it was not that way. Here you see that we are trying to be as simple and as basic as possible. What you see in the background is one of our classrooms. It is not a room as such, but just an umbrella, letting in nature, staying within nature as much as possible, while the students learn and while the teachers teach. They sit on the ground, they read and write and uh, learn sitting on the ground. No? The other way? And even they work in the fields. These children are mainly children of farmers, and they should become and remain conscious that their livelihoods in their families comes from the earth, comes from that which grows on the earth. So, in order to make this clear and practical to them, they, each class, possess a small patch of land which they themselves uh, till and cultivate. Like here in this uh, picture, they are uh, uh, growing vegetables. 
here is one of the the one of the classes. In the back, you have a model giving a typical scene of Shantali life, which is so much around singing and dancing, as you can see here. On this platform, you also have our theatre performances, our little festivals, and uh, the uh, dance performances, which are happening very regularly. And sports. I think a school without the ability to give sports to the children is not a school at all. Here they play football. We have a sponsor in Germany who is giving us the opportunity to have training in, in football every single day on one of the playgrounds near the school. And this is what is happening here as well. And mind you, this is football not only for boys, this is also football for the girls. They are as much involved in our uh, uh, plays and in our sports activities as the girls. This is our lunch time community meal, sitting on the ground, having our food as they are used to in uh, their own homes and when there is a guest, and these guests do come often, then they also sit on the ground as much as they can, as often as they can, and participate in these community meals. There should be no difference, no segregation, it should all be on an equal level that they eat and participate in taking food. This is the end of uh, the little show. Now let me tell you again, this is about 8 kilometers from Shantikita and proudly I say it is our little Shantikita and I hope that it will grow with the blessings of many of you maybe and with the good wishes of all of you that this little effort, which has been going on for quite some time, which has its ups and downs, its immense difficulties, that it will continue to grow and give fruit in the lives of many of these children. Thank you. So thank you, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Martin Kinchin, uh, for your valuable words towards the students and the faculty members of the NHT Program Schools. Now may I request uh, Professor Anubha Masu, Director of NHT Program School, uh, to present a memento to Dr. Martin. Thank you so much. Thank you, President uh, Marshu. Uh, now, I'm requesting all the audience to move towards the atrium of the auditorium to have your lunch. Uh, we have three separate lunch counters uh, with different color of the coupons that is already with you. Uh, so please go to the proper counter and have your lunch. Just, just two minutes. Listen to me. Please, just two minutes. I, I know you are happy. Okay. And by 2.30, uh, we are going to start our next session. That will be talked by Professor Abhubam Pashu. Uh, you have, you have a request that you want some talk in Bengali. So, Professor Pashu is now convinced and he is going to talk much more in Bengali. So you can enjoy the talk and very lucidly we will talk. Uh, so please move towards the 
or trim of the auditorium and have your lunch and please come back by uh, 2.25 so that 2.30 we can start our session. So thank you all, we are ready after the lunch. For the post lunch session, this session first speaker is uh, Professor Manupam Basu. Professor Basu is present with the director of NIT Dudabu. Uh, he is also a Professor of Computer Science and Engineering Department of IIT Karatu. He is a computer scientist, but he has fascination to physics and the other part of the uh, you know, basic science and also the engineering and he has a lot of fascination to literature also. Uh, so that you are going to hear that how much fascination he has, how much attraction he has to Ravindranath and all the uh, you know Bengali and the foreign literature. So he has a lot of uh, patents, I am not going to the detail of that. Uh, that uh, we will uh, get it from the Wikipedia also. Uh, so may I request uh, Professor Basu uh, to please uh, come on the stage and then you are in lecture. Like, Meal. So, we have a 
এমন আমি সবসময় যে খুব গবেষণা ধর্মী লেখা পড়তে হবে তা তো নয় অনেক পপুলার সায়েন্সের বই থাকে আমি যদি সেগুলোকে পড়তে চাই আমাকে ভাষাটাকে বুঝতে হবে তার জন্য সাহিত্যেরও প্রয়োজন রয়েছে এখানে সাহিত্য এবং বিজ্ঞান আমি ছাত্রদের বলছি সাহিত্য এবং বিজ্ঞান কিন্তু একে অপরের সঙ্গে আবার গান্ধিকভাবেই যুক্ত একটা ঝগড়া আছে কেননা বাড়িতে হয়তো অনেকদিন বাবা মা বলে আরে সাইন্সটা পড় বাংলাটা বলে কি হবে আবার সে বন্ধ এসে যায় কিন্তু এই সাহিত্য ভাষা পড়া এবং বিজ্ঞান পড়া এই দুটোর মধ্যে সেই অর্থে কোনো ঝগড়া এবং একটা আরেকটা পরিচয় এই বিজ্ঞান ভাবনাকে থেকে রবীন্দ্রনাথ ব্রহ্মাচার্য আশ্রমের বড়কে পাঠ ভবন তৈরি করেন রবীন্দ্রনাথের চিন্তায় সবসময় এই সুরটা অনুরণিত হয়েছে সীমানা আছে অসীম তুমি আমাদের সবকিছু যাদের সসীম যা আমি দেখতে পাই তাকে ছাড়িয়ে আমার চিন্তা চলে যায় আমার যে অসীমের ব্যাপকতা সেটা আমি আমরা উপলব্ধি করি আবার সীমাবদ্ধ করি সেই সসীমের মধ্যে নিয়ে আসি রবীন্দ্রনাথের এই যে দ্বন্দ্ব সীমার থেকে অসীমে যাওয়া অসীম থেকে সীমায় আসা ঘর থেকে বাইরে যাওয়া বাইরে থেকে ঘরে আসা ঘর বাড়ি হাজার পাখি মনে পাখি যে দ্বন্দ্ব কে কে শুনেছ এই কবিতাটা হাজার পাখি ছিল সোনার খাঁচা ঢুকে মনে পাখি ছিল মনে এটা গান আছে তো এখানে খাঁচার পাখির একটা চিন্তা মনের পাখির একটা চিন্তা এই যে প্রতিনিয়ত সংখ্যা এটা কিন্তু বন্ধুত্বপূর্ণ সংখ্যা এইটাকে রবীন্দ্রনাথ বারবার এনেছেন তার বিজ্ঞান চেতনায় এবং যেটা প্রফেসর বিকাশ বলেছিলেন যে সমস্ত কিছুর মধ্যে তিনি একটা ইউনিফাইড এনটিটির খোঁজ করেছেন এই লাইনকে একটু দেখা যাক একক ও অখণ্ড ব্রহ্মাণ্ড রাজ্যে পরম এক সেই রাজ ও রাজেন্দ্র রাজ যে নিরন্তর অনন্ত আনন্দ ধারা যেখানে সবসময় সেই এক আনন্দের স্রোত চলছে যেটা আজকে দিনে বিশেষকার তার সেই ইউনিফাইড থিওরি পেশনে ছুটছেন পৌঁছেন এক সত্যের থেকে দুজনেই কিন্তু ভাবি এই সূত্রে রবীন্দ্রনাথের সঙ্গে আইনস্টাইনের যোগাযোগ আমি যেহেতু সময় সীমিত আমি এই বিতর্কে আর যাবো না আমি প্রযুক্তির দিকে এর মধ্যে এই যে রবীন্দ্রনাথের যে চিন্তা সেটা এখানে দুটো পেপারের কথা বলা হয়েছে এবং আমি যখন দেখছি না তখন যে সঙ্গে পরিচিত হয়েছে আমি দেখেছি আমি দেখছি তাকে লাল তাই সে লাল আমি তাকে বলছি সুন্দর তখন সে সুন্দর হচ্ছে এই যে জায়গাটা কোনটা সত্যি মানুষ এর দেখা রবীন্দ্রনাথ 
কিন্তু লাইফে ছিলেন জমি আমার আজকের বক্তব্য সেটার দিকে একটু দেখা এই দুটো কবিতা দেখা যায় রেলগাড়ি আবিষ্কৃত হয়েছে রবীন্দ্রনাথ কিন্তু রেলগাড়ি চলেছে এবং এই কবিতাটা একটু তোমরা মন দিয়ে দেখো আমি পড়ছি এর প্রাণ রাতের রেলগাড়ি দিল পায় কামরায় গাড়ি ভাড়া ঘুম রজনী নিচু চালাইছে নাম নাহি কয় আমি জানি না কে গাড়ি সে কতটাই দেবে ভিনার কেউ বলে যন্ত্র সে আর কিছু নয় মনোহীন বলে তার তবু মন্ত্রের হাতে প্রাণ সবিটিয়া বিছানা সে পাবে বলে সে অনিশ্চিত তবু জানে জানে অতি নিশ্চিত তার
मैकेनिकल वीलिंग सिक्टेस विप्लव जो बातें इंजीनियर में आधे विप्लव नहीं के पीले जाते विप्लव में जो बड़े शिकायत का बड़ो आठ का ना साबित हो गए थे फिर खाने का आस्तु तो इतना कि तो आप विश्वाय ना देख से नहीं हो तार बड़े जितना बोल से एक बार आपने बोले लिखो इरा नाना जाती लो सोवियत यूनियन तो विभिन्न टाइम में जिला टुकड़ों टुकड़ों हुए हैं ऐसे राष्ट्रीय आउट में किसान काजा किसान यूपी सोवाई एक्शन ऐसी आज विभिन्न तो जाती लो और का खाना बहुत स्वाय तो कुछ बार चलो ऐ तो अवा उत्साह और शुरू पे से तार एकमात्र कारण तार एकमात्र कारण जंत्र पे दर्शन जो लोग शिक्षा सकल लोक लोक रवींद्रनाथ चाषी 
আমাদের দেশের মাটির জোর যথেষ্ট নয় সমস্ত দেশের ভক্তির সঙ্গে বিদ্যার সঙ্গে অধ্যবসায়ের সঙ্গে তার সংযোগ হওয়া উচিত চাই নতুনভাবে মাটির কাছে ফেরা সেখানে রবীন্দ্রনাথ এই গানকে সবাই শুনে
আমরা রবীন্দ্রনাথ থেকে দর্শন থেকে বুঝতে পারি যে এই যে একটা দ্বন্দ্ব রাজাকেও অস্বীকার করা হচ্ছে না নন্দিনকেও অস্বীকার করা হচ্ছে না কিন্তু এই দুজনে বড় পারস্পরিক বোঝা করা এবং পারস্পরিক যেখানে যন্ত্র মানুষকে ছাড়িয়ে যাচ্ছে সেখানে যন্ত্রকে মানুষের কাছে সমর্থন করতে হবে এটাই ছিল রবীন্দ্রনাথের দর্শন কেননা রবীন্দ্রনাথ সরকি উপরে মানুষকে সবসময় রেখেছে তার মানে এই নয় রবীন্দ্রনাথ প্রযুক্তির বিরোধী ছিলেন কিন্তু রবীন্দ্রনাথ সবসময় মানবতা সবচেয়ে মানবতাকে সবচেয়ে বেশি আমি এখানে শেষ করছি আর যদি এই মিলন আমরা না তৈরি করতে পারি তাহলে রবীন্দ্রনাথের এই কবিতা সত্যি হয়ে যাবে লাভ ফিরে সে অরণ্য লাভে महाभक्तर तब Thank you sir.